Rajit Ram Ramde was on the cusp of his golden years when he found himself back where it all began. At the age of 69, the concrete walls of the maximum security prison in Aruka are now his temporary home. His casual clothes are an indication that Ramdeo has not yet been convicted. Persons charged with offenses and remanded into the custody of the state are presumed innocent and allowed to wear personal clothing unless found guilty. The soft-spoken elderly inmate told CNC3 he's been at MSP for more than nine years after his life took an unexpected twist in 2010. When I retired, I was looking for a security form. Because Ramdeo's matter is still before the court, we excluded his explanation to avoid prejudicing his case. But in our checks, we found a Guardian newspaper report that claims the then 59-year-old was allegedly involved in an attack on 27-year-old Kerry Khan and 26-year-old Amjad, which left one dead and the other badly injured. Investigators told the court the attack stemmed from a bad drive incident. It's very, very hard. As a serviceman, and many more servicemen here in the system, something happened to them in the line of duty. And I feel the authorities paint us with a brush that, listen, we are criminal as everybody here. We are not career criminals. A capital charge in this country could land someone behind bars between 18 to 15 years just awaiting trial. Ramdeo knows the frustration all too well. After all, he's seen the prison system from a unique perspective, not only as a prisoner, but years ago as a prison's officer. I work in all the prisons in Trinidad and Tobago. And I, I have retired in 2004. After 30 years of service, Ramde walked away from this country's most dangerous arm of law enforcement with the hopes of enjoying his retirement. But all that changed. In his 10 years behind prison walls, Ramdeo has gotten another first-hand look at the conditions, this time as someone who cannot leave at his own free will. And for the first time, he's seeing the prison system from a different perspective. People families have been destroyed greatly. There are, there, are, there are men here who is 13 years, 15 years within trial. That is, that is deplorable. In his career as a prison officer, Ramde walked the corridors of incarceration with power. But as a prisoner, he now feels defenseless against the criminal justice system. Since his incarceration, he's been begging for a speedy trial. Ten years ago, his matter was assigned to Chief Magistrate Marcia A. Caesar, whose promotion left a gaping hole in the administration of justice. Now that she's gone, his matter has been reassigned and ordered to start all over again. When you came into the system, was the judicial system as slow? No, because it was not that this influx of inmates, the amount of prisoners. It wasn't that bad as now. And what caused it to be so now, maybe are the not enough uh, personnel in the departments of the DPP. But he's seen for himself what the impact of a slow criminal justice system can have on inmates. Swift justice we must have. And it will be safer for officers and inmates. He believes there should be more stringent laws with stiffer penalties for persons who threaten or even dare to hurt prison officers. Attacks against law enforcement, he says, should be a more serious crime. But for now, the implications are minor, and prison officers continue to interface and treat with the most dangerous men and women in society at their own risk. It is the, the, the rubbish heap. We are the beaten landfill for the country of human resource. They're not good, they commit a crime, they allegedly commit a crime, they're innocent until proven guilty, they smoke a joint, they, they, they pick up a fruit, they thief a fruit tree, put them in jail. If there is any profession that understands the fragility of freedom, it would be the men and women whose jobs are to hold and treat with the nation's prisoners. They've seen people come and go and come again. Even in its unappealing state, prisons in this country have become a revolving door and prison officers know all too well that failure to rehabilitate and reintegrate inmates have damaging effects on the offender and also the officers. That's why for prison officers it is important to remember 
prisoner rights is citizen rights. In 1967, the Prison Officers Association was formed to advance the collective interests of its members. In 2019, the association represents approximately 2,500 men and women, a figure that makes up more than three quarters of the entire prison service. The association's main focus was once fighting for better working conditions, but in 2019, its priorities have changed. Our main issue has evolved over the years, and it is now owing to what we are experiencing with a number of officers being murdered with impunity, safety and security for officers on and off duty. Over the past two decades, 19 prison officers have been murdered with some hits called from behind prison walls. While some persons have been thrown into jail accused of killing a law enforcement officer, no one has been convicted. And for those who are not targeted, there's no guarantee of a long, healthy retirement. General Secretary Jared Gordon says from his observation, those who aren't killed by the bullet die slowly from within. Our present state is one where officers' life expectancy is being shortened, not only via murders, but just but because of the high stress, the environment in which we work, the hours, the demand being placed on the officer, we now have a situation where officers' life expectancy is somewhere around 58 years old. Criminality has transcended the barbed fences of the TNT prisons. Once limited to the outside, criminal activity now perpetuates within. Officers are dealing with brazen criminals who have committed acts they couldn't even conceptualize 10 years ago. This, according to the association, coupled with a number of influential persons with gang resources housed in crowded conditions for inordinately long periods, conjures a dangerous concoction that puts officers' safety at risk. Because they say justice delayed is justice denied, we go back to the judiciary again. The fact of the matter is that when you have matters being drawn out and drawn on, there is, you can't blame the public for feeling a sense of always wanting to be vengeful because, oh gosh, we catch them, lock them up because they know waiting for the matter to be heard in court, not going to give them the satisfaction that they want. And justice denied, they say, can have deadly consequences not only for officers. We have had inmates who commit suicide. After coming back from court, they would have been in the magistracy for six, seven years. They go to court. They finally get a date to go to the high court. They realize it's a whole year adjournment they get. And they're so frustrated, they come back and they hang themselves. And I told, I, I was there in remand. The, the guy hung himself from the cell gate. They explain that remandees are focused on winning their cases. And even the smallest of disappointment can push an inmate over the edge. In this country, there are remand inmates who give away their clothes, books, food supplies and personal effects to cellmates before leaving for court only to be faced with adjournments and case delays. They return with nothing to their name and heavy hearts. We interviewed remandees who in excess of 17 years waiting for their trials, waiting for their cases to be heard. I mean, a person waiting 17 years for justice you could well imagine the type of mindset that that person will have and the type of resentment that that person will have for the prison system so that person wouldn't have the mindset or that, that internal environment that will facilitate changes. The frustration also falls on prison officers who have been accused and found guilty of using excessive force against inmates. Such action has caused the state considerable sums. Unable to sit back and watch a prison service self-destruct, the association, despite a lack of resources, has begun the rollout of restorative and rehabilitative justice. But they admit working with remandees has proven to be the most difficult and progress is often stymied by the criminal justice system. Until and unless there's an effective functioning judiciary, there will not be an effective um, discharge of duties to rehabilitate people in prison. Correct. In the past, educational and rehabilitative programs were mainly offered to convicted inmates with definitive dates of release. But with only one third of the prison population serving convicted sentences, the prison service took a decision to expand those programs to those on remand. Budgetary allocations, however, does not allow for the prison service to treat all of its prisoners 
This is where prison officers have stepped in and commenced activities to ensure that most inmates find some sort of direction and self-worth before release. Officers actually <laughs> doing things to raise funds to provide stuff for prisoners. Something that the central government should provide. And, and even this is why you, you, you find that officers are so demoralized sometimes, is that here it is, I'm receiving a salary to see about my family. I'm taking that same money that I'm being paid and reinvesting it now back into the offender. When all else fails the prison service, Richard says it is the officers who keep the reformation and education processes for inmates going and get little to no credit for doing so while paying for their lives. The association is now lobbying the state for personal firearms, state housing and security systems, as safety has now become its first, second and third priority. As part of this documentary series, the association called for urgent modernization of offender management in order to de-escalate boiling points within prisons and reduce the frustrations of inmates. But even that, they say, depends on an effective criminal justice system. This is Trinidad and Tobago talk. As a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, it is no longer acceptable for me to have somebody locked up for 14 years, their matter not being determined, to complete the matter is going to cost less than it cost us to hold, it cost the state to hold and treat that person for one year. With the average overhead cost per prisoner hovering between $13,000 and $15,000 per month, the association also sees prisons becoming a viable, self-sustaining business. In part five, we'll show you how but as the Prison Officers Association tries to rally its troops, the unsolved murder of its officers continue to gnaw away at its conscience. For now, the collective bargaining body has pushed fighting for wages and health conditions to the side in an effort to negotiate for their lives. An officer from Chait Ram Ramdeo's batch rose to the heights of the prison service and became prison's commissioner. Upon retirement, Ramdeo went in the opposite direction. The retired prison officer admits that the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service has changed significantly since his days as a PO1. Back then, he recalls, the prison population was significantly smaller and as a result, the judicial system moved faster. To help reduce frustration among inmates and attacks against officers, he believes there must be swift justice. Since incarceration, Ramdeo has reflected on his 30 years service and tells CNC3 what he's learned having seen both sides of the prison service. I think that prisoners either take for granted sometime long ago. I have seen that how, how important that is to a person. Like what? Like you know sometimes certain people want to speak to you. They want to tell you something. You have to listen to them a little more now. You give them a word of advice. Always to do it. But so much now you feel because of the youth. He speaks openly about the black market trade within the prisons and explains it will never end. However, he believes it can be drastically reduced with proper legislation, monitoring and heightened vigilance. He admits that while there are various means of banned substances and items entering the prisons, officers remain responsible for some of the trafficking. To bring in a pound of marijuana in the prison system is about $5,000. Wow. Just to bring it. Not as yours, you know. You only get paid to bring it. So if I bring three pounds of marijuana for it, like $15,000, I only get to bring it. As much as he wants stiffer penalties for persons threatening the lives of prison officers, he believes those responsible for deteriorating the integrity of the prison service should also face the full brunt of the law. However, he laments the judicial system is moving at a pace that does not deter the criminal element. For now, there are thousands of men like Ramdeo on remand who long to go home. In our next segment, we tell you what programs the prison service has instituted to rehabilitate and reform inmates and show you how some inmates spend their time behind prison walls.